I wanted to start an all-girl club, but all the girls that rode either were into recycling or saving unicorns or playing softball, and I, and I didn't want that kind of a club. I wanted, like, you know, awesome girls that, you know, just kicked ass. Susie and Taryn were doing this thing, Mod Knockers, and um, I went to one of their meetings, and I was thinking, like, you know, oh, my God, I'm too old. I can't be in <laughs> Moz and Knockers. And I was thinking, well, I'll be like Bea Arthur. And, and then there's Mod. <laughs> I'm a lot younger than a lot of other girls in my club. The people that I hang out with are in their 30s, and I'm only in my 20s. We went to the Mods and Knockers meeting, and we're talking about all this crazy stuff that we love, and they actually agreed. They're like, oh, yeah, we totally love it. We're like, oh, my God, these girls are just like us. I think there's only seven mods and knockers now. We have a lot of fun. We know how to fix our bikes, ride our bikes. Like every girl in our club, their scooter is so them. You know, you look at Rara's, it's like that's Rara's, and Pam's scooter. Like all of our scooters, it's just like an extension of yourself. Love to ride, love to have fun, and don't depend on like some man to make you happy. We have fun on our own. I think that's another, you know, of our attitudes that we don't care. You know, we don't care what you think. We don't care because we don't care. We're not breeders and... <laughs> To become a mods and knocker, we have to approach you. And it's usually after we've spent a lot of time together, riding, drinking, crying, laughing, and usually crying not from like boohoo, but like because we're laughing so hard. I, could, I can imagine that I would have had nearly as much fun riding scooters as I have being a mods and knockers. <laughs>this scooter like it was stock but it had a lot of pep so I got it the day before Halloween and I already had a death theme for it I was like the death bar they're gonna make it all you know skulls and crossbones and it kind of freaked me out because when I got it I opened up the glove box and there's all this crap in there and I'm like oh I got some new Olympia gloves I got a toolkit and there's this paperwork and I'm like well what's this stuff and one of them was just like the state of Colorado, and I'm like, well, that's dumb. And the next one was really colorful, and it's like, ooh, what's this one? And it was like, certificate of death. And I was like, ugh. It's kind of like, you know, when you like get your total at Taco Bell and it's 666. You're like, I don't know if I should eat this or not, but that's kind of cool. I remember when I first found out about Susie's accident and I was at work and I just got an email. I first heard about Susie's accident. I was at work um, and I got a text message. I heard through a text message, which is a shitty way to hear about an accident, by the way. It was September 19th and Ellie and I totally just moved in this house. And I was going to work, it was a Friday, and it was awesome, and I never take Logan because people go into their corporate jobs that suck. And I got a call from Ellie. Susie's been in an accident. I think she broke her knee. 
And I was like, oh God, what kind of jackassery is she up to? Like if you know Susie, there's like no way she could have like injured herself seriously. I never take Logan, so I did that morning. And it was totally gonna turn off on six, but I never got a chance. Some bitch face troll, they're nasty kids in the back of the car just blew through Logan. I mean like I've been at a stoplight with her where we're all coming up to the stoplight and in roars Susie coming at a sideways stop. She hits the crosswalk where it's like slippery. The scooter slits out. She does a somersault, almost lands up in oncoming traffic in Broadway and lands and is like, ta-da! Yeah. So this is what happened, like, Susie, and I'm totally going to work. It's Friday. We get pizza today. Woo! -hoo! Oh my God, what the hell is that? Oh my God, where the fuck am I supposed to go? And then I get a call from Michelle. She's like, oh, she's in the hospital. I was like, oh, it's more serious than I thought. Yeah, so she totally went sideways, and then I put my head through the back part of her window and totally got stuck in there and went for a ride in the car, and it was like a the nucleus in this clumsy ballet that really sucked. And then as it progressed, it just, now, now she's like in intensive care. She went through the back, you know, hit, got hit by another car, was thrown into another vehicle, went through the back window. And then, you know, and then when we went to the hospital and oh my God, and her face was all bruised up. And I'm like, I've got to get out of here. And so I tried to get up and that's when I like realized my leg was broken off and Whole bunch of places. At one point, they had to like fix the leg uh, pillow thing that was like propping up her leg, and they had to like pull, like basically pull the covers up to like move her whole body over, and just like the tears were just pouring out of her face. And that was like, I was like, holy shit, like this is really, this is really serious. Like she's in a lot of pain. I felt like the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. I kind of remember looking down at my pant leg and seeing a lot of blood, but um, that's because I was like compounded out down at the bottom of my tibia. So two weeks later, I go to neurosurgery and they're like, they like, go, oh, everyone has herniated discs. It's no big deal. And then they look at my MRI. It's like the day of the accident. They're like, oh my God. And they slap a neck collar on me, which was frustrating because I'm already in a leg brace and it took me two weeks to figure out how to jerk off with a, a leg brace on. Should I be saying this? Fine. Okay, this is my story. I am Susie. Yeah, so I go in, they, they find out I'm a millimeter and a half from severing my spinal cord. And the risks are if we operate, like you should be a quad right now, but you're not. But if we operate, there's a risk of you becoming a quad or dying. If we don't, there's a risk of you becoming a quad or dying. It's not like I had a choice. Recovering like really sucks, you know, cause you can't do a lot of stuff, but I had like, you know, my awesome, my awesome like support group of my scooter family. The women in our club are like the most amazing women I've ever met. It's way more than a scooter club. It's, um... Like scooters are more of an afterthought. It's my family. For me, like the mods and knockers fulfill like that girlfriend, <laughs> sisterhood type of hole in my life. These are my like my sisters, my family. I spend every holiday with them and they're just the people I turn to. I when I was growing up, when I was younger, like middle school, high school, I was totally unpopular, totally like the outcast, you know. And I never, you know, like I would always have maybe one or two good girlfriends, but I never really got to have that experience of being a part of like a group, you know, and like being included, you know? So like I kind of actually, oh, sorry, hold on. But yeah, it's just, uh, hold on, sorry. <laughs> I love you girls. I love you so much, Mama. But those aren't tears that you're vomiting stupid. out of your eyes. Can you believe that? I haven't God. cried once. This is awesome. I know. That's totally this stupid, though. No, now I need a Kleenex, you guys. Right, that was totally dumb. Okay, hold on.
<laughs> I love you so much. Oh. All right. <laughs> Ask me something more fun than that. It's been just over six months now, and I'm looking pretty good. I'm starting to, like, you know, get my muscles woken up. But every day is frustrating because, you know, when you wake up and you're in a bad mood and you're just like, every day is like that. Poor that was when I buried her, that's her flower. Yep. Poor little guy. You know, people say like, oh, you'll probably never ride a scooter again, but it's like, really? How many times have you choked on popcorn, but you still eat it? You know, if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. And whether you believe in God or aliens or spaghetti noodle appendage monsters or whatever, it's, if it's your time to go, you're either going to be doing something really stupid, like dressing up like a woman, I'm just kidding, <laughs> playing Dungeons and Dragons, or you're going to be doing something that you enjoy, like riding a scooter. Then I'll always be riding. I really am like, you know, the luckiest girl ever, but, you know, it's like I totally have a long bumpy road ahead of me, and I'll totally be going down that bumpy road on a scooter. <laughs> Are you?